Number 24. The Henry's Law constant for O2 is 1.3 times 10 to the negative third molarity per ATM at 25 degrees Celsius. Assuming ideal solution behavior, what mass of oxygen would be dissolved in a 40 liter aquarium at the 25 degrees Celsius, assuming an atmospheric pressure of 1.00 ATM and that the partial pressure of O2 is 0.21 ATM? Okay. So looks like we're getting set up to, you know, do a math problem here, right? Or at least some some sort of calculations. I see a lot of numbers here. They gave us temperature, volume. They give us a Henry's law constant pressure. So the first thing that I see is that they gave us a Henry's law constant. There is only one formula that deals with Henry's law, and that's this formula right here. Cg equals Kpg. Cg, C stands for the concentration. Now another word for concentration is molarity. So you could think of this formula as M equals Kp. Um, the Gs just basically stand for that you're only dealing with gases. So this would be either the concentration of the gas or the molarity of the gas. The K is the Henry's law constant. And in this case, for O2, they gave us a Henry's law constant of 1.3 times 10 to the negative third molarity per ATM. And the units check out, right? They said that Henry's law, one of the units is molarity, and the concentration is also in capital M as well. So that uh, goes together. And then the PG, the P stands for the pressure, and the G stands for the gas. So this is specifically the pressure of the gas that you're talking about. Now let's see. They said the Henry's Law constant was 1.3 times 10 to the negative third. We are using that formula here. Now they're asking for what is the mass of the oxygen that would be dissolved in 40 liters and they said that we have an atmospheric pressure of 1 atm, and then we have a partial pressure of O2 as 0.21. Now I have two pressure values. What is going to be the p value that I use? Keep in mind that it has to be of the specific gas, not the total. So if we're looking for the mass of oxygen, we need to have the pressure of oxygen. And a partial pressure is just a fancy way for saying a pressure, a pressure of one substance. So anytime that you're talking about a, a pressure of one substance that's in like a mixture, especially if you're in an atmosphere, you got tons of gases in there, you call it a partial pressure. And the partial pressure of O2 specifically is the 0.21. So that's the number that we're going to be using. And just make sure that your units match, but it looks good to looks good to me because ATM in the Henry's law goes with the ATM of the partial pressure. So why did they give you atmospheric pressure? I don't know. Extra information just to make sure that you knew which pressure to pick. How rude. But they won't get us, right? So in this case, we have the K value. We have the P value. So we can find the molarity. So let's go for it. X equals the uh, Henry's Law constant, 1.3 times 10 to the negative third times the partial pressure of the O2, which was 0.21. Okay, so that's the first thing. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 times 0.21. And I get 2.73 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that is molarity. Molarity of who? Specifically of the gas, which is O2. Now, is that the final answer? Not really, because they wanted the mass. And keep in mind that the mass is a gram value. So how can I go from molarity to a mass? Well, there's another formula, right? We know another formula for molarity. Molarity equals something divided by something, right? Moles divided by liters. We just found out the molarity of being 2.73 
times 10 to the negative 4. And they gave us that we're in a 40 liter aquarium. So I can find out the moles. Um, if we just cross multiply here, right? Moles would equal molarity times liter. So maybe I'll just set that up right now. Moles will equal molarity times liter. So moles equal the molarity, which is the 2.73 times 10 to the negative fourth times, we're already in liters, it's a 40 liter, so 40. Take that answer, times it by 40, and you get a mole value of 0 0.01092, and that's moles of O2. Are we there yet? Almost. We still want to find out that mass. So all I have to do is just convert the moles into grams of O2. Well, how do I go from moles to grams? This is like going all the way back, back to basics, right? Moles to grams, you always just take your mole value and you times it by the molar mass, right? MM, molar mass. The mass that's on the periodic table. So since I have two oxygens, I'll take my value that I have of oxygen on the periodic table, which is 16, and times it by 2, which is 32. So I'll just times by 32. Take that number, times by 32, and I get that whole number. Now I'll, I guess I'll put it into scientific notation. I mean, it's 40 liters, that's only one sig fig, so maybe we should have only one sig fig, but I don't really, I don't really care about sig figs. So 0.35. And that should be the final answer. So you're looking at roughly 0.35 grams of O2. That's the mass. And there you go. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. I really hope these, these videos are helping you guys out. We got tons of videos and tons of topics. Um, so I'm with you guys every step of the way. My brother's there with you every step of the way in physics. And we got you covered in math. So we got a lot of subjects with more coming your way. Hopefully we can help you with those as well. I will talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.